A lot of people ask about clarification, the five step or five stages that I use to grade degenerative myopathy. So I thought I'd quickly talk about the five stages and what is involved in each one of those five stages. So stage one, very rarely do we see patients coming in and diagnosed at stage one, unless they're a competition animal or a client that is very in tune with their pet. Most people put or miss stage one because they think it's hip dysplasia or some type of osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease because they start to see their pet scuffing along so they're sliding their feet along the floor they're shuffling along they're not put plicking up and placing they may notice that the innermost so if we the innermost nail so these are your thumbs your dew claws these nails start to wear because they're starting to drag their paws when they're going around corners and that inner nail starts to wear. We may start to see that they're swaying a little bit in the back. but And so these are very subtle changes. And so most pets, when we see them, or most patients, when they come in to see me, we usually diagnose them around stage two. So with stage two, we start to see now wearing of all the nails, like they'll start to scrape. So you'll hear the click, click, click as they're walking and that's them instead of being out of place and move forward and up they start to pl drag as they're coming through we start to see changes in the tail so they're not wagging their tail or holding their tail up the tail starts to look limp and it will wag to side to side but doesn't have that spring in it that it used to have we start to see change in gait. So we're starting to see what's called the drunken sailor, where they're starting to stumble or they're stumbling. You may notice that they're falling over a little bit more. They may have issues standing up. So trying to get up, they may stumble a little bit and then get going. As I said, they may have more of that drunken sailor uncoordination. So while you go on the walk, they may start to trip. And you may look and say, well, something's really not right. They're tripping, they're more clumsy than usual. And these are usually the stages of stage two. Stage three is where we then really get noticeable changes. So now they're, they're stumbling when they're walking. They've got that really drunk sailor look. They're crossing their hind limbs as they're turning corners and they're staggering around. They're now dragging through as they're stepping. So they're wearing out the tops of their, or really their knuckles. And when you look at the paw, all their nails will be worn down, but they're not, no longer placing and stepping through. They're placing and dragging through. We are losing muscle mass, so you'll see they're leaning out in the back and they're starting to look skinny in the rear end. We lose tail movement, so their tail's now flaccid. And it may move side to side, but there's no spring in their tail anymore. It just lays there limped or may have lost all movement at all. So it just lies there. Um, they may actually have problems getting up and not be able to get up at all and you have to pick them up to get them on their feet and then they start to move but we're now seeing they're falling over they're, they're stumbling their their ability to move they're now showing signs of urinary and fecal incontinence um, you may need to support them with a supportive sling to help them go up and down stairs we're now seeing physical mechanical involvement and also neurological involvement where they're losing sensation of pain and touch in those rear limb. Stage four, we've got complete loss of function in the hind limbs, complete paralysis. There's no pain or sensation function anymore. They have muscle wastage, so you can see the scone, the bones of the, the hind limbs. Um, they're very anorexic in those rear limbs for disuse atrophy. Um, we have fecal and urinary incontinence. Uh, the disease is slowly starting to progress, so you can actually see it moving up um, ascending up the spinal cord. But in stage four, you have complete loss of all function and sensation, and as I said, urinary and fecal incontinence. Stage five is once it, now it's progressed to the forelimb. So now you're seeing the signs that you saw back in the hind limb. So loss of uh, the ability to move, loss of function, starting to wear out of the nails, 
incorrect placement, loss of muscle mass at the front, they start to fall over, no longer can pull themselves forward, uh, loss of feeling. So when you pinch them that they no longer have that retraction and also now it's affecting the diaphragm and their ability to breathe. And so this is stage five and then late stage five is there, then you then or stage six, um, no one or really gets there because then stage six is paralysis of the diaphragm and they suffocate and die. So these are the five stages of how I stage and benchmark degenerative myelopathy for my patients. There are other staging systems out there, but this allows a good benchmark system so we can say, okay, we're transitioning from stage two to three, three to four, four to five. Um, if you are medically able to get there because there's a lot of physical um, labor involved in medically managing a patient when they're transitioning from stage four to stage five. But I just wanted to answer these questions and just alleviate a little bit more because a lot of people ask as I go through and explain um, what are the different stages and what is involved in the different stages of the five stage system for how I rate and grade my degenerative myelopathy patients.